there everybody it's sally here again and where do the weeks go because tuesday is back again and i'm here with another teaching tip so today uh i'm going to be just thinking about singing and teenage boys now i was at the abrsm conference on saturday and this was a question that arose how can we encourage boys to sing the oral tests what do we do when they don't i'm just going to put that exam idea just to one side for a moment and just talk about boys and their changing voices so the first thing to that you can do as the piano teacher is understand exactly what is happening here not in a deep way but just recognize that all boys do this all boys their voices will change and that's the first thing for you to be able to use is this word change boys voices do not break nothing breaks they change and you change your terminology to match that so avoid saying your voice is breaking their voice is changing and it's a very natural thing to do so the second thing for you to do is to help them be comfortable with that change in other words it happens to every single boy with very very few exceptions and it's not something that, sh that that should be hidden or something that shouldn't be discussed it's a natural part of growing up and it's a really lovely way of boys knowing that they are maturing if you like so that's the second thing um, about helping them to be comfortable with it and you can help them to be comfortable with it by acknowledging it and actually helping them to recognize the various um, changes and the stages their voices are going through so I just put my five fingers there because actually the boy the, the voice the boy's changing voice will go through five stages between um, be before it begins to change yes in its its treble form and then it here it is at the very end where it's actually matured and they've probably become a baritone and in between um these stages here they well sometimes it's called cambiata this this middle stage here and i think it's particularly this third one that can be the cambiata stage and this can happen really quickly with a boy it can happen over a matter of months or it can actually happen on a much, much bigger scale and, and take a year or even two years to change. So um, it is interesting if you if you um, are working with a boy that one week they might be able to pitch in a certain place and the next week they won't because their voice will have shifted by then. Um, some really, really interesting work, and I've learned a lot certainly from Professor Martin Ashley. And he has got a website, and I will put you a link to his website down below, and a particularly interesting article that he's written about teenage voices, not just boys, but also girls. And um, I would really recommend that you do some reading around the subject. If you've got a boy who is wanting to do some oral tests or needing to do some oral tests probably and the voice is is changing at that point when he, they're doing it because if you understand it you can reassure both the boy and the parents to be honest there's another really really great tool that martin ashley has put together which is a um, an app it's completely free it's called speech test and again i'll put the link down below um, you can get it in the app store and all the boy has to do is count that's all they do they count down from 20 so 20 19 18 17 and just by doing that the app will recognize where whereabouts the voice is and what and it will actually put it in one of the five um avatars that the voice currently um relates to yeah so that's a really useful app and it's a lot of fun and boys quite enjoy using it and also it just makes them feel comfortable and makes them realize actually i'm not the only person who's going through this and i think that is just so important for our boys I just want to say two two more things first about girls because girls voices change as well we might not recognize it in quite the same way but they definitely do change and often girls can go quite breathy and often again they can sing one week and then they can't sing the same range or anything the second week so just be aware of those changes and the last thing i want to just mention is to go back to this idea of singing in an exam situation having to sing an oral test um, first and most importantly 
I think it's up to you to communicate with the examiner and to help your, your student communicate with the examiner. And by that I mean, if the boy has got a range of five notes and you know what those five notes are, but anything above or below that is just, you know, a bit of a car crash, then just write down on a little slip of paper or on the program slip, you know, Jack can only sing from bottom C to the G below middle C or something like that. And then that really helps the examiner because we can then choose exactly the right test that is going to um, match that particular pitch area. So that would be the very first and the most important thing. The second thing is for you to just remember that this is a tiny, tiny part of the overall exam. And so if at that particular moment in time, they're just not comfortable with the singing, don't fret about it. Don't make a big thing about it. Just say, OK, well, that's as it is this time. You know, let's not worry. Let's focus on scales. Let's focus on all the other parts of the oral test that we really can work on. So I hope that's helpful in understanding, actually, I think how important we are in, in helping boys with changing voices to actually come to terms with the change, that it is a sign of growing adulthood and um, that it happens to everybody and that actually their voices are changing, they are not breaking. Hope that's really helpful. Thank you to everybody for watching. And I can see I've got something from Denise. Yeah, working with children is so important. It is so important. And we really do have to watch the words that we use. And this change from break to changing voices, I think, is one of the key things you can do with a teenage boy. And yeah, as I say, hope that's helpful. Bye for now, folks.